Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Uncommon, and, and welcome. Today we're going to talk about Planet Crafter and its 1.0 update. Uh, an update that I just completed. We started about four days ago at the beginning of the game, and we played through to the end. You can see at the top right, we've, we've got a terraformation index of 7.6 trillion. And in front of us, uh, a beautiful base, green grass blue waters and blue skies and a really <laughs> awkward looking mushroom forest but we did it we finished it we had about 30 to 40 hours under our belt at this point we had initially played about two years ago when the early access version first launched we got about 20 hours into the game hit the precursor before the insect stage before we were kind of capped off and I, I put the game aside until 1.0 told myself we'd come back and we'd give the game a try when, when it was finished because we really enjoyed what we saw when we first landed and a lot has been changed since then we've missed out on a lot of updates and I guess and missed is a strong word because we got to come back and kind of relive the first half of the game we had kind of already played and then we got to see all of the new things all at once and from my understanding, you know, a lot of the intricacies have been really fleshed out. They've they've done a really good job. You can see here we've got what we call my, my base 2.0. Our first base started up here on the high grounds. Where we were slowly building out this, this box before we realized we needed more space. And we needed to get some manufacturing going. And really, I think for most of us, our first base actually starts somewhere down here under the water. Because when you first land in Planet Crafter, the story is that you're a prisoner. You've committed some crime and you've been sent to a far off world to terraform it. And this world in particular, it looks, and as you play the game, you and other prisoners have found yourself given this seemingly impossible task. You start in a tiny space shuttle capsule at the bottom of this crater with a little bit of food, a little bit of water, and a tool for, for gathering materials and crafting. You gather those materials, you start building yourself a base, you start putting down drills for pressure and heaters for heat and an oxygen... for oxygen? The oxygen plants and veggie tubes and all the things that slowly terraform the planet. And before long, you're introduced to blue skies and Moisture starts to fall from the sky. Rain. <laughs> Rain starts to fall from the sky. Uh, insects start to populate the world. You're planting gardens and you're populating the world with fish and butterflies and frogs. You unlock the ability to automatically craft items from nearby chests. You auto unlock the ability to, to get drones and help you move items from nearby chests. And before you know it, your heat and drill machines are massive. You're launching rockets into the sky. You're automating the collection of all your materials, transporting those materials to a factory, and automatically crafting all those facilities. And I'll tell you, that's when the game really started to unlock for me. That's when we saw ourselves move from base 1.0, which is kind of still in the process of being deconstructed, down to base 2.0, where we could really expand and lay out lots of machines without worrying about terrain features getting in the way. This bit of automation right here is what really, really captured me and sold the game to me. We were at about 12 to 15 hours in when it occurred to me that I could start automating everything we'd been doing. That products that were taking me 20 to 30 seconds to gather the materials and craft could now be done automatically. This super alloy rod right here. We now just have eight of them sitting in a chest whenever we need them. And they're delivering those chests anywhere that they're needed for crafting. This part of the game felt amazing. And as a fan of not only open world survival games, but specifically automation of factory games, I fell in love. I'm a big player of Satisfactory. I love Factorio, and I've got a couple hundred hours at each. And those are probably rookie numbers, 
for most of the automation fans out there. Um, but each of them grip me and pull me in. And if they do for you, I think this game will pull you in too. And it's just about that time when the gathering and handcrafting starts to get a little complex. When the materials start to just start to get out of hand. When this avenue opens up, and you're going to probably want to do the same as I did, is tear down your old base and really start to expand. You're going to find yourself tinkering with the automation. And then you're going to find yourself moving over to build up all of the terraforming aspects of the game. And then you're going to find a new material or a blueprint that you need to come back and automate. And then you're going to remember that you need to go out and explore the rest of the map here so you can get all the rare materials and, and blueprints that exist beyond your local area. And before you know it, you're hunting down rare pulsar quartz so you can build massively overpowered power structures so you can support your great empire of machines. And then you've unlocked a portal to distant wrecks where procedurally or handcrafted, we're not sure yet, Rex and, and, and reward dungeons on the rest of the planet. A whole new section of the game opens up for, for rare crystals that you can use to craft even more advanced objects. And piece by piece, you're running through this loop of base building, automating, exploring, terraforming, and then you've done it. The terraformation index is slowly climbing to its last bit and you're going to have completed the game and so here i sat at the highest point on my base overlooking everything we had accomplished and it was a lot of fun my terraformation index was almost at 5.0 trillion and that's an important number because it unlocked the final blueprint the final blueprint itself was our ticket home an extraction shuttle that take us back to civilization we've we've completed our sentence we've done our job it's time to go home and this was nice we counted it down to the last point zero one we made our blueprint and we tried to leave and the game said no it said there's an anomaly you've got to go blow it up to keep you from extracting and this was kind of where I think the game fumbled for me personally. And this is going to be very specific to me and my experience. It may not be yours, but at this moment of climax, when we were ready to complete the game and celebrate our heroic return, we came to find out that there were about one to three hours, if I'm estimating appropriately, about one to three hours of exploration and puzzles that we had missed. See, we had been getting these emails throughout our game from a friend, Riley, who was checking in on us and giving us tips, but also coordinates. And there's a whole backstory for another civilization of people on this planet and their struggles against the humans. And it's a series of four or five underground areas with keys and puzzles and, and things that we're, we're supposed to explore as we were playing. We were supposed to be uncovering tidbits of information and learning the lore behind this world. And at the end, when it told us to destroy the anomaly, we'd go back to one of these places we'd already been and, and place a bomb and we could go home. And then if we had done all the exploration and all the puzzles, we could have seen some alternate endings. But for me in that moment, having missed all of it, it kind of felt like a downer. Like, I, I had I got really excited to get out of here, get off this planet. And then I had a whole list of chores ahead of me that um, I had to do. And again, I, I think this is probably more specific to me than it would be to any individual's experience. So I won't, I won't say it's a terrible way to end the game. It's just one that I tripped over personally. But... For the last hour or so of the game, can't really spoil the 30 to 40 hours I got out of, of building this. And even now, I'm, I'm still thinking about 
how I'm going to tune it up today. How we're going to make some adjustments and continue our optimizations. This was thrilling. And I think if you're a fan of open world survival, an automation game specifically, pick up Planet Crafter. And along with the 1.0 update, multiplayer. Apparently up to you and 10 friends can do this together. So get out there. Get out there and share this experience with friends or take it on alone because it's a hell of a journey either way. And I'll probably do it again in the future, you know, looking for the next big update, 2.0, or, you know, maybe we start adding flying flying laser dinosaurs. Who knows? Ark, Ark, had, Ark had that big leap of <laughs> leaping the shark thing for me with lasers. Don't worry about it. Off topic. If you want to see more of this content, like this video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps. And we'll see you next time. Go craft your planet. <laughs>